welcome to my room. So I'm now on board the Hurty Guten. It was very easy to get on the ship. It was literally just kind of bag scanned and we got the staff all there to meet us. So this is my room where I will be living for the next couple of weeks. Very Scandinavian feel to it all with the wood which curves up around like this. There's a lovely, nice, all real wool blanket as well. Give me two dressing gowns. What the Hurty Gruden do, they don't use any single plastic at all. So everyone is given these water bottles. And these water bottles, you fill them up around the ship. Hand sanitizer and mask if you wish. Bottles of wine, uh, I think that they've put those straps on because they know I'm going to nick them, but we do know it's because the water's very dangerous and can be very, very rough. Mini bar, lots of recycling goes on here, which is very good. If you wanted to sit in your room, you can watch your television here and you can live stream all the lectures and things, what goes on around the ship. Moving on to the wardrobes, very, very clever idea here. So we have one storage space just here. Second one here, where you can hang your clothes and put your clothes away. This wardrobe is a very clever wardrobe. So this is for all of your wet products, wet clothes, excuse me. So you have your life vests, and then you will also be given down here, a little dryer, which comes up and you put your boots on top. So when you get back from the snow and the ice, or if you're out and you get wet, you put your boots on top and it dries them for you. Rubber slippers as well. I won't be using them because they've clearly been used before. <laughs> um, moving on to the bathroom. Very Scandinavian look again. It's very smart. Very nice indeed. Um, all of the bath products, they are all vegan friendly as well. Lovely, nice big shower. It's very, very clean. I'm very impressed actually. It's a very, very, very nice first impressions if you were to hang this on your door which says we stay green that means that the housekeeping staff will not clean your room for you and if you do not have your room clean they don't donate 50 pounds to a conservation charity and this is my window i actually thought it would be a lot smaller than it is because i'm not staying in some big fancy suite upstairs but you can see how big it is and every cabin has a window like this on levels five. I don't know if there's a floor below us and a floor below above us, but there is suites and things upstairs which actually do have their own jacuzzi and stuff in the bathroom. I am very, very, very impressed. So we're about to set off in like half an hour. Um, we've just done our safety drills and stuff. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually going. Um, so everyone's like gathering up on the top decks and stuff like that. So I've decided I'm not gonna bother because it's just everyone's seen those views on, on the internet of boats leaving ports and stuff. So um, I got other ideas what I'm gonna do anyway because no one else will, will be doing it. Anyway, I'm setting off shortly. Okay, I love you, bye. So rather than following everybody else, going up to the other decks just to film leaving, I thought I would sit here in Yusraya, drinking beer from Norway, toasting myself, going to Antarctica. Love you, bye. It's now 1900. We're literally about to set off any second now, and I'm sitting here, and the hot tub has stopped bubbling because the hot tubs and the swimming pool they're actually heated by the engines and it's a hybrid boat as well so i guess all the power is going to the engines now so that they can get us on our way to antarctica <laughs>
I really don't know what's going on, but um, I was in Argentina and I set sail. I'm going through the Beagle Channel, but now I'm in Chile. My phone says that I can use my phone for free while I'm here, but I don't know how long it's gonna last. So I'm just making this quick random video. But um, I've come for dinner. They told me to come at half past six. I'll come for dinner when I want. So um, here I am, I'm just in this restaurant now. Uh, I'm just having some dinner, but anyway, I'm gonna go, I love you, bye. hear that noise? I hope that you can hear that. That's the actual wind whistling outside. If you get closer to the doors, you should be able to hear it now. So the wind is certainly picking up. The ship is definitely rocking now. You can see me moving. So, um, if, you, if you're not a seaman, and I'm certainly not, <laughs> it's not the nicest of mornings to be out on the boat. Scandinavian, this whole ship and this great steam pit, but I just wanted to share with you more importantly the view. So you can sit, go into Antarctica in a sauna with this view. As the evening approaches and it gets dark outside, you see that the ship staff, they close window blinds to make the ship look darker. This isn't just for any old reason. The reason behind it is that the birds who are flying outside, they'll fly towards the light and then they, they call them bird strikes and then the birds could injure themselves and kill themselves by hitting the glass because they'll fly towards the light. So every evening you have to close the blinds, you have to close your bedroom curtains. Anyone in a suite or, or has a balcony, they have to have all their lights off outside so that the birds don't come and hit the ship. should have done it a couple of days ago but 
you get distracted and the bar was open. So they give you a mandatory onboard safety briefing when you get on. And one of the things that they teach you is how to put your life jacket on. Now, quite simple to put on. Put this over and then, oh, he says it's simple. I might be drowning. <laughs> Click this piece here, and then there's another bit around here, which goes on to there. These have to be worn whenever you're going from the ship to the land and back again, but you keep it on all the time when you're on land. There is a pin just inside of here. When it hits salt water, that dissolves and then it inflates. If not, you pull the red manual inflation handle just here. I say it's a manual inflation handle, that's what we say at work, but it's that simple. But I think when it's freezing cold outside, it might be a little bit more difficult. So hopefully we won't have to use it, but if I do fall in off the edge of the boat, I'm sure someone's gonna be recording it and I really would love you all to see it. Love you, bye. Oh, not that I'm planning on doing that. Love you, bye. Good afternoon. So we're not even halfway across the Drake Passage yet. This is known as the Drake So, don't want to sound disheartened, I'm going to try not to moan, but it is like the brochure says. So, um, I made a video earlier and I got a little bit upset, so I'm going to add it at the end of this video, just so you can see. So, basically, uh, everything's a lottery, whether you go and kayak or you go camping or you go doing whatever, whatever activities they are, and you have to pay for them. Now, one of the things I really wanted to do was go camping and got on board. The price wasn't 350 as stated, it's 430 something now per person. Now, because I'm traveling on my own, the likelihood is I'm not gonna get to do it because the tents are for two people each and there's only 30 spaces available. But in saying that, they're only lotterying 26 spaces. The four other spaces you have to bid for. So I've bidded an extra 700 euros to try and do it. Um, so if I get to do it, I get to do it. But um, I also want to do the kayaking, but then I'm, we've all just had like another like meeting. You're ushered from place to place throughout the ship since like seven this morning. You go from one room to another room to another room to have all these meetings. Um, and now there's a photography um, like expedition that you can go on. And that's quite cheap, but those spaces are limited to four. So everybody wants to go kayaking. There was like more than three quarters of the ship who were in there just all wanting to go kayaking. So I'm thinking their first preference is kayaking. So I'm gonna put mine as photography because I love photography and that's probably one of the reasons I'm coming here. Um, so I probably won't get to go camping, but who knows. Um, I may go kayaking, but hopefully I'm going to go and get some photographs. Otherwise, I'd just spend a week on the ship just pottering around. So it has been a bit of a con, really. The brochure should have told you, but um, fingers crossed. We'll still get to see some nice things. Like I say, we're not even halfway there yet. Um, and the sun's actually finally came out. Um, I'm not cold. Um, I, I guess I just don't feel the cold. <laughs> but there are people wrapped up in their winter best already. <laughs> I might even just go back into the jacuzzi. Um, there's one more mandatory meeting that we have to do this afternoon, so I'm gonna go and do that. But I thought sod it. If I'm coming all the way to the Antarctic and I'm not getting off this ship, I don't wanna remember it. Cheers. Well, I told you I'd all be honest with um, the trip that I was going on. I told you how much it all cost and I was budgeting myself 2,000 pounds spending money for the trip to do activities, to go buy things. Um, so it turns out basically everything is a lottery here um, for the kayaking, for the camping, for, for everything basically. Um, but camping is one of the main things that I really wanted to do or want to do. Um, but it, it was um, 438 euros per person. But because I'm traveling on my own um, and the tents hold two people, uh, the likelihood is they said that I probably can't get on, but then they've 
there are four spaces available um what they do like a silent auction for um so the top four paying people get to go on go, get to go on it so um i've just had to fill out this form so i've got to pay an extra like the bid that you want so i've just had to add an extra 700 dollars sorry 700 euros onto um the camping trip just so there's a chance that i can do it and i think that's a little bit unfair really um so but we'll see we'll find out in a couple of days so um wish me luck hopefully i'll get to do something on this trip instead of just having diarrhea and wanting to throw up all day love you bye Good morning, this is now take number four because I'm really not awake. <laughs> so it is Tuesday morning, it is seven o'clock. We went to the captain's greeting last night. He states that this is classed as the Drake Lake rather than the Drake Shake. However, a lot of people are suffering now. There, um, People aren't leaving their cabins. They're not able to meet the mandatory meetings that have to be done. Um, he states that about five o'clock this afternoon, we should start meeting the first islands of the peninsula of Antarctica. Uh, so from there we're going to go into the fjords where it's less rough. Uh, it's just light drizzle this morning. He says the water temperature right now is 5 degrees. Um, I think there's actually a little bit of sleep coming down as well. Uh, yesterday evening I saw a flat. Uh, of course it was flying, it was a bird. Um, a wandering albatross. Uh, I've just seen a little birdie now. And at 9 o'clock this morning for an hour and a half they're doing their first wild wildlife watching should we say uh, so you can go to one level to watch whales and another level to watch birds personally i i think you can see them both from both levels i don't understand why they're in different places so I, what i need to do is go and get a cup of tea and then i'm probably going to get into the lovely hot tub try and warm up um and let's see what today brings love you bye it is 16 10 p.m. here somewhere near the south. So far I've seen five humpback whales, uh, wandering albatross, um, other birds, that I can't remember their names, but the weather has just closed in. You can't actually see anything, but next is um, a picture of where I am. I found an app where it shows me, and there is land that side, well, an island that side, and also an island this side. As the weather's so poop, can't see anything. Love you, bye. Good morning, everyone. I woke up super early, not because of excitement, because I needed a pee. Um, so I'm awake, it is 10 past five. You see the clock behind me. Uh, the staff are out, just, they're filling up the swimming pool because the swimming pool couldn't have been filled on the way across the Drake Passage because the water rocked so much and it could have shattered the glass so they're filling the swimming pool up now they're washing all the decks down that the decks actually all covered in ice at the moment um i know you've got snow in england and it's nice and cold there but you haven't got the mountains of antarctica behind you <laughs> i'm finally here I just don't know where to look and it's only like six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 